Hi, my name's Neil Creswell. I'm with the Kickstarter Watches and Horology Microbrands group on Facebook. Uh, you can find us if you go and look for Kickstarter Watches in the Facebook search bar. And um, today I'm going to be reviewing the Advisor Ascent, which is currently up on Kickstarter, surprisingly. Um, normally I get to review these watches uh, when they come into the store. I also run the microbrand stores you see here. Uh, this is not a watch that we'll be selling in the store, so it is an independent review. Um, reason I'm doing this review, I know uh, Andy, the guy behind the brand, because I have carried a couple of other watches from Advisor before. In fact, we still have a couple in the store uh, that I particularly like. So. I was really happy to take this one on and kind of give them a candid review. I'll kind of go over the pros and the cons, but you know, as with all my reviews, I'm not being paid in any way or compensated for doing this. I'm, I don't necessarily get to keep the watches. This one I'm, I'm passing on to someone else at the end of the review. Um, the campaign's been up for a couple of weeks now, I think, and it's got like 10 or 11 days left in it. And the time this gets published, probably about 10 days. But nevertheless, even though this is kind of like the end of year Christmas season and not normally the best time to be running a campaign, to be honest, uh, on Kickstarter because everyone's spending their cash on uh, holiday presents, still it was a very successful campaign so far. It got funded in about 12 hours or so. Um, not super successful, but I think that's partly the time of the year. But anyway, some people who uh, main kind of be a little bit harder up than normal budget wise at this time of year still going for it so that that says a lot for the watch so uh let's just talk about the overall what's available because i only have one model here which is the uh there's an ascent series and this is the classic uh white and basically there's kind of two halves to the series there's a classic half and the skull half so uh the classic gives you a uh covered dial that's going to be this shape with these kind of indices and the uh, skull one gives you a kind of raised metallic uh, skull on the dial and it's semi-skeletonized um, so two different halves to the series the classic or the skull uh, so it's the ascent classic or the ascent skull and then the classic is also further broken down uh, there's an ETA version so a Swiss automatic movement ETA 28242 uh, and there's uh, this one here that I have here is the standard one, which is a NH35A, which is actually an extremely reliable movement um, and an extremely good choice for a Kickstarter brand. So you have a choice between a slightly more expensive Swiss model uh, that's on Kickstarter at $480 currently, which is actually a very good price for a, a Swiss automatic movement. So I was happy to see that. And the NH35A, I think part of the reason this is such a successful campaign so far, um, this is only $265. And when I say dollars, I'm giving you US dollars. I know that uh, you may see some higher prices when you look at Kickstarter. But keep in mind, if it's got an S in front, those are Singaporean dollars. Uh, Andy, uh, sorry, Advisor, are uh, based in Singapore. So... Uh, it's often easy to mis misread that and think of that as US dollars, but uh, US dollar value is actually somewhat lower. So uh, this particular classic style, 480 for a Swiss or 265 for a very reliable NH35A, I think the, that pricing is excellent for what you're going to be getting for it. Um, in terms of other choices on the skull, I think the price is slightly higher than the... It's also an NH35... Uh, not big one, it's not an NH35A. It's slightly higher price on the Scott, 295 US dollars. Uh, that's using a Miyota 82S Zero. Not usually a big fan of the Miyota 8 Series personally. Again, it's a reliable movement, but it doesn't uh, hack um, and uh, can tend to have a noisy rotor somewhat. But at the same time, I understand why that movement's used in that particular watch because it's skeletonized, semi-skeletonized, and uh, obviously you don't really get a good choice with the uh, NH35 family there. So um, still, a very nice watch to look at if you like skull watches. So in terms of the color scheme, this is, they're calling it white. To me, it looks silver. It's basically a stainless style. It does have a sunburst effect. You can probably pick up on that. Uh, on all the dials, there's a black version and a white, but there's also a sunburst green and blue, and those were the ones that really appealed to me. 
Um, it's kind of luck of the draw when you do a review. The guy only has maybe one sample of each and has to send these out for reviewers. I was hoping, to be honest, to get the sunburst green and blue because I'm just a real sucker for uh, green and blue sunbursts. As probably anybody who knows me in that group will <laughs> will attest, I seem to buy those the most. Um, but anyway, it is this is still a really nice one to have. It has a very nice um, sunburst effect, but the sunburst green and blue were my personal choice because the, it's got a PVD case rather than stainless, and it's kind of a copper color to it. Uh, they call it rose. It's not like a rose gold. It's kind of a brass bronze shiny copper color to it but the advantage of that is that it's not going to uh, you know get a patina over time so it's going to keep that shiny polished look to it so that goes really well with it with a strong sunburst which you can tell they are very metallic dials very similar sunbursts so uh, also the skull has a um, black skull version which is black PVD and also has a rose uh, they're calling it which is again the same kind of copper look to it so personally I would go for the rose um, pros and cons of that the pro is it's uh, it's almost as if you're going to be getting a, a brass or a copper style uh, brass or bronze watch uh, for not very much money uh, so that's definitely a big plus uh, the, the con is even though you're going to be getting matching hardware if you um, want to switch out to something like a NATO strap really you really wouldn't be able to match that color very well because it's um, not a uniform color but still if that's a concern you can also go for the stainless steel case which looks really nice it's very well brushed and with a polished bezel on the top that's a very thick bezel and you might have noticed it's um, I haven't even added this up one two three four five six seven. so it's basically a uh, 12 sided um, bezel so it's kind of interesting it's um, not not a rotating bezel it's basically a super compressor style and it has you can see two two crowns which are nice and the upper one will adjust the ring on the inside now a um, couple of uh, points to make about this before I get any more into the specs the first point is this is a pre-production so there will probably be differences to the production model this is a sample I always ask when I do a review, so give me the list of all the differences that you know between a sample or a pre-production prototype and the actual production. You know, can you send me the original packaging that you're intending to use so everyone can see that? Can you tell me the differences? So he did point out one difference, which is uh, this is currently not a screw down crown. This is the one you'd pull out to stop the watch, make it hack, wind it, adjust the date and time. You know, so it's not a screw down crown. Um, so that's uh, one item I believe is changing. Uh, but that's the only thing he's pointed out so far. So I'm going to go ahead with the rest of this review and assume that everything else is the same as production. Um, and if uh, if I have any points to make, I will certainly share those. I do actually have one point to make about this crown, whether or not the final one's going to be a screw down or not. Um, or this is probably handmade specifically as opposed to made in the normal normal manner. Somebody probably machined this. Um, it's a very easy to grip crown. Uh, I tend to have fat fingers and uh, I can easily pour this out so I have no issues with using the crown uh, but um, at the same time it's extremely sharp. I'm almost cutting my fingers on it. I have to be really careful of this uh, top part that's kind of domed um, and it's kind of a pity uh, I th because <laughs> it kind of puts me off playing with it. I doubt that will be the case in production but Andy if you're watching this um, please do check because this is super sharp uh, maybe it's got some burrs on it or maybe it's just been machined and hasn't been um, kind of polished out but it's it's definitely very uncomfortable to touch I'm pretty sure I would cut myself if I'm not very careful on that so that is the kind of situation you would typically get with a, maybe a sample so it might not be that way in production but certainly a question for people to ask in the Kickstarter campaign, I would think. Uh, not a showstopper because this is something that should easily be addressable between now and when the production run actually occurs. The other thing I noticed about the, um, obviously the um, chapter ring uh, rotator here, for want of a better phrase, is that and I have other watches that have this kind of style where you have a inner chapter ring that rotates with a secondary crown. You know, a typical example would be like a, a, a Seiko SARB-017, a Seiko Alpinist. I have one of those. 
and I tend to jog the crown a bit and it tends to move. I really don't find this one jogs. It's it's not stiff, uh, but it's it's easy enough to turn, but it's not one that jogs around. So even though it's not a screw down crown, I'm not having an issue with it. If you try and treat it like a dive watch, well, unfortunately it is easy to move in both directions. So I wouldn't say this meets a dive watch standard, but there again, uh, people who, this is more like a desk diver in my opinion, uh, people who would go for this type of watch would probably either want to have this screw down to lock in position anyway, or um, or would be considering this as a desk dive. You could still certainly use it for timing. I personally would have preferred to have seen uh, something more functional here, like uh, 1 to 12 in terms of hour markers, and then you could use it as a poor man's GMT or something just to rotate it and make it more of a field watch, especially as the bezel itself isn't turnable and it's just the inner chapter ring. But the style of this watch is a dive watch. It does have uh, some really nice loom on it. This is daylight, um, so I'm not even going to close the curtains, but I'll just light this up just to show you. It's Swiss Super Luminova, either BGW9 or C3, depending on the model. So you can see where it's going to be loomed, I think, by the... Let's get rid of the reflection here in the camera. You can see, uh, without doing it properly, where it's going to be very nicely loomed. So you've got the not just the pip, but it, it looks like the um, markers as well. Um, so it's uh, a nice loom job on it. Um, obviously the date window is also very clear. So it, it's a functional watch, no question about that. Uh, in terms of the rest of the features, it's a standard 42mm watch uh, with 22mm uh, lug straps. Um, and the height is supposedly 13.5mm. It is a flat sapphire crystal with an anti-reflective coating. So let me just go check that height. I'm kind of curious when people give heights and things. Um, how does that come out? I actually have it even less than 13 and a half. I, you know, I think he's being conservative. I have 13.1 millimeters uh, on this. So it's actually a pretty decent watch uh, height-wise, uh, considering it's an automatic with a fairly thick case. And uh, you have a decoration on the back, kind of a bit like, reminds me of Foibos, actually. Hope I don't get shot down for saying this, um, but it looks um, it's kind of uh, a giant octopus, and you've got a uh, a diver here. Uh, I don't know if he's battling the octopus or about to be the lunch uh, on the menu, but it's certainly an interesting uh, decoration on the case back. So uh, the strap itself is uh, calf leather, and it says genuine leather, so this will be the lowest grade of real leather. Uh, so basically, um, nothing wrong with it. It's actually a nice thick strap. It's very subtle. I wasn't the first one to get this, as so somebody's already worn it. Uh, I actually wore this watch for a week. Uh, the day I got it, I noticed in the first 24 hours it was uh, losing or gaining two minutes, which was really bad. So sometimes you have a watch that um, kind of needs... It's a bit like, I don't know, like an old car or something, where you when you get a new car for the first time, you kind of have to run it for a little bit for everything to kind of fall into place and work smoothly. So I had this watch for a week uh, as I was worried about that. That that two-minute timing was um, sitting stationary on a desk, uh, just hand-wound, uh, uh, and uh, wasn't on a watch box or on my wrist. Uh, but nevertheless, since then, it's been keeping very accurate time. So I think it was just the first day, first 24 hours or so, Maybe whoever looked at this watch hadn't really used it before. Uh, and then it's just a question of the parts kind of uh, running for a day or so just to have everything uh, working smoothly. So I don't know. Uh, I haven't, haven't been able to reproduce that. So I, I don't know if other people will have that issue. But if you do get a watch like this, a mechanical watch, and you do have an issue uh, where it's not keeping good time when, you, when it arrives, do run it for a few days first before you... Uh, make a final call on it because sometimes that can make a difference. So um, I think we covered most of the specs here um, and the choices. Um, I actually like the watch um, particularly because it's uh, it's hard to explain but it, it, it feels like a chunky case. I think the polishing is very smooth on this watch. I love the bezel on it. Um, it's certainly an interesting style. Would I spend uh, a large amount of money on it probably not but for the price point that it is on Kickstarter I think it's an excellent value 
The retail on this is $400 for an NH35A. That's not too bad either if you miss the Kickstarter. Um, but uh, the retail on the ETA is $800. I think that one will be a little too rich for me. I might think that one's a little too high. Um, and obviously it is an ETA movement, but I don't see... Um, I don't see an $800 watch here, to be honest. It's a really nice watch, however. So a good value watch with a lot of nice features in it. If you want a super compressor style, this probably is better than uh, some of the other ones you might get uh, the same kind of price point for sure. Uh, so it looks really well built, um, maybe a slightly higher quality than some because of the finish on the case. It's really nicely brushed and you've got this thick uh, bezel that I'm really liking and the and the uh, uh, 12 side 12 sides to it so that's just covering uh, this watch I think that's if this is what you ca uh, came to look at the review for then uh, we've got this covered in case you're interested I will briefly cover the other two watches that I have from advisor just so you can have a, a more idea about advisor as a kind of brand and these other two just as a full disclosure I do carry in the store so um, I don't know if this is the packaging for the uh, production for the Advisor Ascent that's now on Kickstarter, um, but I basically um, see there's a white box he sent me, so I assume that's the packaging. I didn't get the correct insides for this. Uh, it was passed on by somebody else, so he just used some bubble wrap inside there. But um, I imagine your packaging is going to look somewhat like this. But let me show you the packaging and features for the uh, Astro Helm, which was their last Kickstarter advisor, and also uh, models that we carry in the store. And I'll be super quick on this as well, because I know this isn't the main focus of this review. So I have two Astro Helms here. They came in two color choices. And the first one uh, was called version one, second one called version two. And really, it's the exact same watch with the same California dial. Uh, the only thing that's different is the case. One case is kind of a, a rose gold color or a gold color. And the other case is a, a stainless steel. So a reason I wanted to mention this, not so much as a sales pitch, that's going to come over that way, I'm sure. Um, but the reason I wanted to mention this was I, the whole reason I got to like Advisor in the first place. Um, these are super hard to photograph because um, they don't have an anti-reflective coating on the uh, sapphire crystal. But can you see that super high dome? That's a double dome, super high double dome. It's, a, it's like almost a bubble. And that is one of the most appealing features of this watch that I've had great difficulty trying to photograph. So um, it's a watch that people often pass up on because they just don't see the features um, because there's not really many photographs of this out there because it does tend to pick up on the light a little bit but it's perfectly readable and it's it's a fascinating watch it's a 44 millimeter as opposed to 42 but it's a 40 uh, 52 millimeter lug width so it's quite wearable it wears about the same as a as a 42 uh, and or, or just just slightly more than that, but you, you've got a Panerai inspired dial, but you've got a kind of a brushed. It's it's metallic, but a brushed kind of wood style pattern on the dial itself, and it's also an, obviously another reliable uh, NH35A movement with um, again Swiss Superluminova old radium loom. So it's it's a nice watch. And you can see the hands are loomed. Not so the dial is slightly loomed, but not not strongly. Um, and but it's a it's the dome that gets me. It looks really good on a wrist uh, when you wear this, and it's a 24 millimeter strap as well. So you have a very nice watch that people often pass up on, which is kind of the same price range as I'm seeing with the new series here. So the Ascent is a similar price range. He's just come up with a super compressor model as his next in the series. So that kind of gives you an idea of what else uh, advisors have done before. It's not their first rodeo, which is always very reassuring on Kickstarter. You know, if he's able to produce one watch, he can produce another. And then you have a stainless steel version, uh, and then you have the uh, rose gold version as well. And then the straps are crazy horse uh, leather straps. So it's, um, oh, and almost forgot to mention, it has screwed uh, lug pins as well. So that's another nice feature as well. Um, so, yeah, so that's that's the, the other watches that I know from uh, Advisor. 
and is a great guy. He's been very responsive. Uh, I've dealt with him for about a year now. Um, so definitely a brand I could recommend overall. And I really hope that the Ascent uh, split with its super compressor, it's a good value. I hope more people pick up on this and uh, get themselves a Christmas present or whatever, the holiday of your choice uh, for the end of this year. Uh, if you're buying them for everyone else, why not for yourself? So there you go. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll be more than happy to address them. Thanks a lot. Take care.